Paul, what's your background and how did you find yourself in this, uh, in this crazy business of, of ours? Um, well, I had kind of an unconventional path, I would say. I worked at a, a couple of firms in New York, uh, well-known you know, investment banks. I was really kind of aggravated that I wasn't back in L.A. because when I'd been in L.A., I had met some interesting people. I'd met uh, a bodybuilder named Arnold Schwarzenegger who was, uh, at the time I met him, still a bodybuilder. And uh, he started asking me, like, you know, could you help me? There was a company, some of you may remember it, is still around, kind of, Planet Hollywood. Uh, they still have a casino in Las Vegas. He's like, I need to make a deal with them. Can you help me? And then he said, I want to buy some real estate. I want to buy a movie studio. You know, and he was always calling me up. So finally, I left my comfortable Wall Street job, and I went and sat basically in a little glass box outside Arnold's office and started my company. You know, I said, the only thing is, I don't want to just have one client. I said, I'll do this for you, I'll invest your money, I'll help you with your deals, but I need to be able to take other clients. And it's very dangerous when, you, when you're a manager and you're responsible for making good, de good decisions to have one client. The first big deal I ever did for Arnold, it was wild. I bought him a 747. <laughs> <laughs> we leased it to Singapore Airlines. No one had ever done anything like this. Then it, Arnold says, why don't you go out and talk to some of the other like big movie stars and see if they want to do it. So I went out, I talked to like four or five of the biggest movie stars in the world at that time. What, what, how much, mo what? It's 175 million, what? What are you talking, and it was just like a disaster. <laughs> Arnold was the unique one who could conceptualize that thing, get the math, but also understand why that was actually good for his brand. When Beats came up, which also, like every good startup, we had fits and starts, we weren't sure if it was a great idea or not, but we, we knew that Dre was real and, and, and authentic and sound and that he stood for something, and we knew that if Jimmy and Dre were listening to the headphones, that was, gonna do, that was gonna be real. So we figured, okay, well we teamed up with this company called Monster and, and uh, we put them out in the market and then we sort of realized pretty quickly that we had something. Why has Beats resonated so much? Why has it become successful? Is it, is it strategy? Is it, is it this, this sort of visceral feeling of authenticity that, that you talked about? Is it the endorsement, if you will, both explicit and implicit by so many different people, both celebrities, but also people just walking down the street. Jimmy and Dre listened to each headphone 5,000 times, right? Jimmy always tuned the headphone, or listened, to, um, I, I forget which Tom Petty song, but it was one Tom Petty song, okay, that he had produced. And Dre always used Into Club, which he had produced. So every headphone, Every prototype, every version was listened to for those same two songs five billion times. And they knew exactly what it was supposed to sound like because they had produced the song, they had engineered the song, they had heard it in the studio, they had discussed it with the artist. That sound, which a lot of people criticize, like you'd read stuff online, there's too much bass, there's too much distortion, <coughs> there's too much this, there's too much that, it didn't matter. It was the right sound. It was the sound that the artist had wanted to be in the headphone. My question is, can you describe your work ethic? You know, I'm kind of working all the time, uh, but I love it. So I don't look at it as like a, a bummer, like that I'm working all the time. If you love to work and you, and you work hard, you just have to make it work. And you can't, you know, you, you have to figure out how are you gonna coach your kid's football team? Because if you don't, you know, after when he's 30, you're gonna regret it, right? So it's, it's like, you, you still, that, I'm not saying you shouldn't have anything else in your life, but you do have to be in, entirely dedicated to this stuff or it's just not gonna happen.